time is now 6 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, March 27th, and this regular meeting of the El Campo Independent School Board of Trustees is now called to order. Let the record show that this meeting was duly posted in accordance with Section 551.043 of the Texas Government Code with regards to posting Woo! meetings and that there is a quorum of members present. At this time, would you please rise for our prayer led by Mr. Brock and uh, pledge of allegiance to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this chance to, to come here together to do the work of the school district. We thank you for the people that make up the district and all those that are here tonight to be recognized and, and honored for their accomplishment during this school year. We thank you for them and how they represent this, this district and this community. We ask that you continue to just lead us in all that we do and help us to be who you'd have us to be. Bless this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At regular meetings, the board allots 15 minutes uh, to persons who desire to make comment to the board for items that are not related to agenda items on the night of the regular meeting. Has anyone signed up? No. We also allow public testimony. That is for uh, the public to address the board regarding an item on the agenda for any open meeting. Has anybody signed up for public testimony? No, sir. Okay, that takes us to recognition. Callahan. Yes, sir. We're excited to have... Um, Brooke Levinka and Lindsay Painish here to recognize our individuals who have still got an opportunity to head to state. They have not gone yet, but these all of these students will qualify. We have some um, uh, what if, whatever I call these, James um, <laughs> certificates. Thank you very much uh, to uh, hand out to them. James will do that uh, with all of you up front. So, um, we'll introduce all of the kids through the two sponsors. Then we'll get everybody together for a picture, and then we'll get all the parents in there. Good deal. Ooh. And then Miss Valerie puts it all on our Facebook and wherever else you put it, Valerie. Website. Social Website. Media. Am I on your way? Stand right here, right, right. Okay. You want me to talk now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brooklyn Bank and I are the FCCLA um, sponsors at the high school, Family Career Community Leaders of America. We kind of cover a lot of, you know, areas um, within our discipline of study. Um, we took 20-some-odd oh, kids to uh, our regional meet in Galveston, February, and in our respective events, um, in mine, I'll talk about mine first and the kids that I coach. Um, in each, we competed in three events, culinary arts, um, we competed in baking and pastry event and an event called cupcake presentation. Uh, culinary arts, um, big event, huge, yeah. very competitive. Um, we, they have to prepare a full menu um, for professional chefs and they're looking at everything from their uniform to what we call mise en place, like their prep work. Uh, their technique, their knife skills, their cooking techniques, their plating, the way it tastes, everything. Just they're looking at everything. And I had two students that placed in the top five, and that is Julianne Little. She placed second. She's back here. She's also here for swim. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Connor Bush, she placed fourth. So these two will be heading to state and they have a whole brand new menu that we are now practicing daily for and uh, and it just gets harder. So if they place in top five at state, they go on to nationals, which is in Seattle this year in July. Um, our next event is baking and pastry. Um, Don't go anywhere, y'all. Stay, stay, oh, stay here. <laughs> <laughs> We're to the... Our next event is a new event for us. It's a new event for FCCLA. So it's called baking and pastry, um, clearly. These skills are focused on that area. Um, in region, they have to decorate what we call a dummy cake, which is like a styrofoam cake. They have to demonstrate perfect, you know, frosting skills, smooth. Um, they have to pipe certain things. They have to write. They have to make buttercream roses. Um, 
and they have to do all of this in front of professional pastry chefs and within a certain amount of time. They're also looking for all the things that culinary is looking for, uniform, safety and sanitation, all those things. And we had two students, and actually at State, they're moving on State, they got to do everything. They have to do, they have to make French eclairs, they have to make muffins, and they have to make, what else are they doing? They have to do the cake, cookies, they have to do everything at a culinary school in front of the, the pastry chef judges. Um, so it's a little like just, you know, the, the rigor is upped a little bit at State. And so uh, the two students that placed in the top five, I have Samantha Hurtado. She placed fourth. <laughs> And uh, Megan Collins, who plays fifth. Okay, last but not least, um, we our next event was Cupcake Presentation. Now, this event is not as culinary based. It's more about the presentation of it. So they're judging their they're judging their culinary skills with the cupcake, but they're also judging their speaking skills. And um, so, what these girls have to do is come up with a particular cupcake, a flavor profile. They have to uh, build a display that goes along with the theme of their cupcake, and they are elaborate, let me tell you. They are beautiful and elaborate. Um, and then they have to write a speech about the process, and they have to give the speech memorized. And so they're looking at all of those speaking skills and all of that. Um, it's a lot of hard work and dedication that goes into it. And um, my two students that place in the top five that are going to state is Linda Martinez got first place at Region. So she <laughs> And then Sophia Medina plays fourth. So that's all for me. So I guess it's Mr. Well, why don't you come up here okay. and get them all organized and let us <laughs> right. take a picture? All right, but that's easy. You can organize them all. Right. 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 You're you're back. Back. I think hey, you're a back rower in this group. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So we are growing our own. Hopefully they'll come back to us and teach one day after college. Um, so this year we participated. I took three teams um, to the FCCLA contest. And we participated in Toys That Teach. And so the students had to come up with or invent a toy um, that teaches. And they have to figure out what grade or what age level that um, the toy would be most beneficial for. And it has to be made out of everyday items that you can find around your house. And so this year... Um, proud to say that we swept it clean so we had first second and third place in the contest which is exciting I think the judges had a hard time trying to see who was first second or third out of these three teams because they were all so great um, third place was Alma Rosales and Julissa Padrone um, and they created a spin and spell with pool noodles and a pipe where you can twist and spell words um, for phonemic awareness also, so that was exciting. Um, second, Julissa's not here, she's going to state for debate also, so she's practicing for debate tonight. Um, and then, let's see, second place was Andrea Sanchez. And she created a binder, a learning activity binder that has eight different pages of activities for kids um, to work through. And then first place was Elizabeth Flota and Valerie uh, Gutierrez. And they created a game called Move, Groove, and Improve. And it's um, for motor skills and a, a math game. And it's made out of a shower curtain that you lay out on the floor. And it's got little icons and a spinner board. And so it's a big um,
So, Mr. Russell, we have the uh, Technology Student Association, and Holly Guthrie is here. Holly, where you? Oh, there you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, we um, actually have a chapter that's been at the middle school for many years. We have started and stopped and started and stopped at the high school, so we started it up again and we've had some really good success with that. So back in February, we brought 12 students to a regional competition that was at Jordan High School in Katy. And from that, we had uh, several students that have advanced to go to state and we will be leaving for state next week and state is in Fort Worth. So we will be gone for several days for that. We're very excited about that. So I need my competitors. It's your turn, sir. <laughs> so um, at the high school level, we had Estrella Brito. She um, competed in uh, transportation modeling and uh, placed third in transportation modeling. So she'll be going to state with that. Uh, she had to actually create a, an RV vehicle and show the modeling involved in building this and actually build it out of cardboard. Uh, then we had Jack Wortham and uh, Vivian Daniel who competed in coding, which was a great feat for, I was very impressed with them taking that on and going head on with it. Um, and they placed second in coding, so they're gonna be advancing to state in coding. So uh, technology has been nice to provide us with some laptops for them to take that on to state because we can't one or the Wi-Fi Chromebook so we had to have a laptop for them to actually use that for their uh, event and then um, Jack and Whitley Meacham uh, placed second I believe in problem solving and they will be advancing to state in problem solving so they had to go in and were given a set of materials and said here you have to solve this problem with this set of materials so a lot of what I do in my classroom they're actually doing in that competition event. So um, we have one other person that was supposed to be here tonight. I'm not sure where she is, but that is um, Ava York, and she placed fifth in career prep, where she had to develop a resume and cover letter for a job interview, and so she placed fifth in that. She's going to state with that, and so we pre-submitted that for state, and hopefully we will see that, and she will get to actually do an interview process at state with that. Kelly Garner and Shanna Evans here, so as soon as they can find their way to the front, there you go, there you go, look at that. It's like you were shot out of a cannon, Kelly Garner. Katie. She's here. All right, this year for swim, uh, the boys team and the girls team won district, and then the girls team won regionals. And then the ones that qualified went for regionals that qualified for state for the boys team. Let's if I could get the whole boys team up here that went to state. Caden <laughs> <laughs> Beal got 12th in the backstroke. I'm sorry, 12th, 15th in the backstroke. So he qualified for the backstroke and got 15th at state. Hang out. Hang, you, hang out. Hang out. I don't see nobody just, just all, the girls, all the girls come up here and I'll say it while you're up here together. So. As a team, the girls got fifth at state. Um, the medley relay of Riley, Julianne, Kate, and Caroline, they got fifth at state. The 400 free relay of Riley, Julianne, Cody, and Caroline. <laughs> 
anniversary lamp came in, not Carolyn. The anniversary lamp. The medley relay with Riley, Julianne, Kate, and Cody. The 400 free relay with Riley, Julianne, Cody, and Caroline. Um, some of the other individual finishes in the 50 free, we have the state champion, Julianne Little. <laughs> and then Cody Clatt also got 14th in the 50 free. <laughs> in the brushstroke, we have the state champion, Riley Wallace. <laughs> and then Kate Chilton got 10th. Come to the front now. That's a good spot. Consent agenda. According to local policy DE, a consent agenda is provided that includes items of a routine and or reoccurring nature that are grouped together under one action item. We've been furnished with background information. Does anybody have anything they want to pull out of the, of the consent agenda to be considered by itself? Is both the gymnasium, both need repairing? Is it high school gym? High school gym. Both of them? Or just, just, the, just the main gym. There what was happened? water damage. Did we have a loop, a roof leak? Or? Nope. Came up through the floor. So that is that is a 
the rules out, they don't know what they're doing. With, with, it's a 50 year problem. So that, that slab, that slab was not done right when it was built. It is the new gym. Everybody still calls it the new yeah. gym. Even though there's a newer gym on the campus. Uh, but the, the slab was not done right and moisture comes up out of the slab, through the ground, through the slab. They've tried to put a barrier on it. They've done everything. But it's just something that... What, are they trying anything different this time? Uh, we're going down and all the way. You know, I don't see either Jeff or Mark. I know Mark said he couldn't be here. But um, they're just going to go all the way to the, to the base and then try to come back up, put new, you know, floor joists in to keep it raised and put a barrier in again. But I don't think it's going to necessarily, it's, it just, you have such a big surface area, unless we redo the whole thing, I think this is going to continue to happen. So this is a um, short, long-term fix. How often do we have to fix it? This it's been your, a while. This is your first time. This is my first time. So I, I've probably done it three times uh, since I've been. Not, we did I, it twice. Yeah, I think we, I've, I've been through this three you. times. They, they did it right before he left, and then. Uh, okay. Seven, eight years. Yeah. And the new gym was built in the 60s? 68. And not designed for air conditioning. Yeah. And that's that, when we put air conditioning in it, it Sped up the problem we already yeah. had because it draws the draws the moisture. Well, I'm not in there a lot, but I prefer to keep the air conditioning. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And then on the task eight facility service master agreement, that is to do asbestos. Do we have any asbestos? No. Oh, okay. But we still have to have it checked every four or five years. Oh, okay. And so uh, apparently we should have done this in 2020. But in the spring of 2020, as we'll all remember, schools were all closed down, so none was done, and this we're just coming up on our. Um, gotcha. And the and the dollar amount for that, I I think I told Mr. Dorotick earlier today it was 2,050, but I apparently didn't have my glasses on because it's actually 2,060 dollars. Okay. All good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Dorsey, a second by Ms. Smith. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries unanimously. <coughs> that will take us to uh, 6, one. 6A1. 6A1, consider approval of purchase of Amplify ELAR Texas. Uh, so back in December, we talked to y'all a little bit about a, about a grant, the Lasso grant we had applied for. And with that grant, we were trying to get the Amplify curriculum for part of kindergarten, all of first grade, second and third grade. Um, this year, the applications for that grant tripled and we were not one of the recipients. So we found out in, in February that we were not. So um, I sat down, met with the principals, dug deep, and said, okay, what special fund that we have to spend, regardless, we have to spend the money, um, could we use and possibly still try to make this happen? So piecing some different things together between Title I money, Pick 36, which is um, both of those campuses, or re-education money, and just going, okay, well, we're not gonna use this, we're not gonna use this, if we put it all together, can we afford to do this? And so we were able to come up with the funds so that's what we're asking the board tonight is to approve, um, allowing us to, to purchase the funds for um, Amplify. Um, it would be for a year. Well, the consumables would be something we'd have to replace. So we'd have to either look at putting the budget. We'd, of course, apply for the grant again um, to see if we would get it. This year, we would have a little up on them because we would be using an HQ line of material now where we weren't before. So that gives us more credit in the rubric that they use for the grant. Um, can I talk about 6A2 also? Because they kind of go together. Yes. Okay, so part of the grant was also a um, kind of a service with Region 3. And um, what that means is Region 3 will come in weekly and meet with our teachers to give them support in implementing this um, curriculum. So it's weekly support, it's training up front, it's you know pure understanding of what they're going to be doing. So with the use of Amplify, we wanted to make sure that we were still getting that support too, so I reached out to them and got an MOE from them. So we're asking for both, basically. Uh, but using the 
the same fund, the special fund. Okay. It's still, yes. But it's still special funds. So we're not tapping it into any local money that. So this is be, this is all. Yes, it's between Title One funds, Title Five funds, and Pit Thirty Six, which is the ODSJ account. And Mr. Wells, do we have carryovers in those that we typically don't spend yearly? Yes, we only have carryovers. What are we? What are you giving up to? To uh, by son. this? So they could maybe speak more specific. Mari or Elizabeth's not here, but it would be any other say materials that they. Okay. There's times when we get down to the end and we just have to we have to spend the money, so we have to buy okay. stuff. You yes. know. So, um, so there's some excess. Stuff yes. There. Yes. So it says this is replacing HMH and really good, really good reading. Yeah, so that's our current curriculum. And we're spending money on that right now. Well, we've already, we've already we bought it eight bought years, it. seven years, six years ago. Because okay, we're so going to get it for an adoption anyway. We're just, okay, so. I got you. Mara, do you want to add anything? Since no, no, she, she answered the question. We just took a look at our budget and, and moved things around. And right now our campus had what they needed for this year. And we, we just piecemealed some, some different sections together. Mm -hmm. So is this an annual expense or is it recurring or is this it, one time? Part of it will be, but not the whole amount because like the teacher's editions and all of that won't be recurring, the big books and things like that. It would just be the student consumables that would be a recurring expense. Okay. So. Questions? And, and you get to reapply for the grant. And we get to apply for the grant. Yeah. Did they give a reason why you weren't no. selected for the grant? No, but Region 3 just shared with me that the they received information that the applications had tripled compared to the year before. Any questions? And it's just through third grade is all done. Yes. I'll, uh, is there a motion that we approve the purchase of Amplify ELR? Do you want to do them both in one? Amplify and let's do them, let's do them separately okay. since they're listed yep. separately. Um, I'll support. I have a motion by Mr. Dubrock, a se second. second by Ms. Mahavitz, all in favor, all in favor raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Same sign, motion carries unanimously. We've already discussed uh, 6A2. Uh, I'll hear a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding with Region 3 for Amplify Implementation Support. I'll make a motion. I have a motion by Ms. Smith, a second by Mr. Irwin, all in favor raise your right hand. Same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Next is consider approval of new instructional materials for science. So this year, science was up for adoption. Um, and so back in January, we put a committee together that can, it had representatives from all the campuses. They went to the vendor fair in Region 3, saw the vendors, narrowed it down. We had those vendors actually come and then present to them either in person or via Zoom so they could ask personal questions, get clarification on anything they wanted. Um, unanimously, um, McGraw Hill was across. Everybody wanted that, um, so I did get the, the quote and information from them. Um, the funds we would use is our EMAP funds because that is what those funds are for adoption uh, materials. So it's not anything that we wouldn't do. But science is up this year. Next year will be social studies, and we'll do math. So every year we're going to have one. Um, so this will be for four years, and we'll just keep rotating that way. Questions. We have an allotment to pay for this. Correct. We don't get an allotment to pay for HPIM. Correct. Which now, what years. will happen though is once the new House Bill uh, 1605 is put in motion, because we're using HQIM, we will generate another $40 per student that's using the HQIM. So we will generate more money in the allotment by using that Amplify. So that is the plus to this. The most frustrating part of that to me and this is just a personal issue, but the state of Texas now owns Amplify and we're paying the state of Texas to yeah. buy an instructional program. Correct. So we're we're pushing out more and more. So and then by the time we do science again, they'll have one in science. Okay. They don't have one in science yet. Uh, I'll seek a motion to approve new instructional materials for science. Oh my okay. goodness. A motion by Mr. Dorsey, second by Mr. Dubrock. Raise your, uh, all favor, raise your right hand. Pull the same sign. The motion carries unanimously. Uh, that's going to carry us all the way to uh, closed session. Uh, time is now uh, 6.30, and we will adjourn the closed meeting.
Texas uh, closing meeting under Texas Code 551 and 074 personnel matters. Time is now uh, 741, and we will reconvene in open meeting. All right. I move that we approve the administrative contracts as recommended by the superintendent. A motion for you, Brock. Second, Mr. Gorton. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Ms. Kaufman, that was recorded, correct? Yes. Because Ann isn't in here, she'll have to write that. If you'll just make note That's of it. when it was, please. Thank you. Make a uh, recommend a motion to hire Patrick Burton as assistant principal at El Campo Middle School. I have a motion by Mr. Dubrock, a second by Ms. Smith. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to the superintendent's report. Yo, TASB summer leadership start making plans. We'll hold the dates on that. 12 through the 15th. 12 through the 15th. I put it down June. last year. <laughs> yes, June 12 through 15. Well, um, should we get rooms for us? Yes, we'll do it. We'll do all of that for y'all. Put the rooms on, on our credit card. So the one thing I want to make sure that y'all are able to do this year is we will bring you a um, tax exempt notification that you can fill out prior to going so that you just hand that that way when I pay for your rooms and, and, and we cover your your room and your um, valet park uh, school safety and security recommendations we are in the midst of um, we had a school safety and security meeting this past week um, we talked about some safety and security methods that we want to implement um, or research to implement and so some of the members of the committee are doing that right now and they will report back to us in time for us to bring those recommendations to you in April so that we can implement them and then star testing dates Alicia put those dates in there so you kind of have an idea of what's happening and then monthly attendance and monitoring you should have gotten that report Anybody have any questions about those? That's it. There being no further business uh, to come before this meeting, I now declare the meeting adjourned. The time is 7.44.